To get started in the second part of the course, we'll go through the main components of a mobile network. If we start with this thing called a handset or terminal or cell phone or smartphone, it has a speaker and a microphone. It's got a codec for digitizing speech. It's got a modem for moving ones and zeros around and an antenna and battery. And of course, it has a keypad and a screen on it. Another component of the terminal is the SIM, the subscriber identity module. And this is on a card that's removable on most phones, not on iPhones. And so it's called the SIM card. And if you look in the back of this one here, take the cover off, there's the SIM card. And on this card is stored some critical information. One piece of information is the International Mobile Subscriber Identification. So this identifies you to the network. The implication is, is you could take the SIM card out of this phone and plug it into another phone and then the network would know that that's you as a customer now using a different phone. Also on this is half of an encryption key pair that's used to authenticate the data in the SIM. And this is important for stopping people from cloning phones. And also stored on here is the location area identifier. And this is a piece of information that the phone learns from the network. It identifies which base station the phone has last talked to. The phone is connected to a base station over an air link. The base station has three main components. One is the base station transceiver, also called the base transceiver station subsystem. So it's either BST or BTS, depending on which manufacturer's products you're using. In any case, the base station transceiver is the radio. And this lives in what looks like a garden shed at ground level and it produces energy at gigahertz frequencies in the form of electricity. The electricity is carried up to the second component of the base station, which is the antennas, over thick coaxial cables. Now coaxial cables, they're two wires, but one is inside the other. And to reduce the attenuation on the wires going from ground level up to the antenna, we use big fat coaxial cables about that big around. These guide the electricity that's vibrating at gigahertz frequencies up to the antenna. And the antenna is the device that converts electricity vibrating at gigahertz frequencies to electromagnetic waves vibrating at gigahertz frequencies, which then propagate through space at the speed of light. We might see a tower with antennas, and if they look like a stick, that's an omni-antenna. It radiates energy in all directions. Those aren't very common. More often, the antennas will be rectangular-shaped things. It's called a flat panel antenna, and it emits energy in a wedge shape, so it only covers part of the circle around. And so, of course, as we're going to see, this increases the capacity. You can have more different radio systems on the same physical tower with an antenna with a shaped beam. The third component of the base station is the physical support for the antennas. And in the first generation, we had pretty big cells, and the antennas had to be pretty high up off the ground. So we had these big, ugly towers as the support for the antennas. In the second and subsequent generations, we lowered the power and made the cells smaller. So that means the antennas could be closer to the ground, so they can be on the top of a building or a water tower or something like that. The base station has to be connected back to a mobile switch. And when we say mobile switch, we don't mean that the switch moves around. We mean that it's capable of keeping track of users moving around. And this connection from the base station back to the mobile switch is called the backhaul. Now, if there's a fiber running between those two physical locations, and the company operating this base station is an affiliate of the phone company that owns that fiber, then they will use fiber to connect the base station back to the mobile switch. In many other cases, there's no fiber available, 
And so what we use are dishes pointed sideways like this. This is implementing the backhaul, not with fiber, but with a point-to-point -point radio link. And so we might have the communications, the backhaul from a base station back to the mobile switch, go through multiple different towers with point-to-point -point radio systems before we finally get back to the mobile switch. The mobile switch is responsible for keeping track of who's where, amongst many other things. And the way that this works is that the phone learns which base station it's talking to from the base station and stores that on the SIM card, the location area identifier. Now, when you first turn your communicator on, this thing has been programmed to communicate at particular radio frequencies. And what it's going to do is it's going to transmit on these frequencies its international mobile subscriber identity and a bunch of other things. And this is going to be received by the mobile switch. And the mobile switch is going to look up to see whether that customer is one of their customers, whether that phone is the right phone, and authenticate using the encryption technology. And then they're going to check to see whether that customer has paid their bill or not recently. And if all of the above is true, then the switch is going to give an indication to the phone over the backhaul, over the air link, saying, yes, you've got service. And as part of this process, the phone will inform the switch what the value of the location area identity on the SIM card is. And the switch stores that in a table called the location register. Then the idea is, if somebody calls you from a landline, so they pick up the phone, they punch in some numbers, and that call goes over their loop to their central office, to a toll center, and then to the cellular telephone company. A cellular telephone company looks like a central office as far as the telephone system is concerned. And then the phone call will be terminated on the mobile switch. So at this point, the caller hears a bit of snap, crackle, but that's about it on the line after they finish dialing. Then the mobile switch is going to look in the location register to see which base station that phone last registered on. In other words, what value it reported as its location area identity last time it talked to the switch. And what it'll do is send out a page on that base station. Now, I don't mean page as in pagejet. I mean page as in trying to find somebody. And if the phone is still on, it's going to answer the page. And at this point, the mobile switch will cause the caller to hear a ringing signal in their ear. And the mobile switch will say to the phone, do you want to take this phone call? Here's the caller ID. In other words, the phone will start ringing and the caller ID will show up on here. And then when the cell phone user presses the answer button or swipes it or whatever, at this point, then we have voice communications going from the phone over the air link to the base station and then over the backhaul to the mobile switch. And the switch will bridge the communications internally to the connection that it has to the public telephone network. So we have communications over the air link, over the backhaul, over the connection to the toll center, over the connection to the central office, and then down the landline to the far end. Then you get in your car, and while having a conversation, you drive away from the base station. And what's going to happen is that sooner or later, the switch is going to have to do a handoff. And in the simplest example, that means the switch is going to stop sending information to and listening to this base station. It's going to start sending information to and listening to that base station. And your phone, of course, has to stop talking to that base station transceiver and start talking to the new one. With some of the technologies, we actually break the connection to the first base station and then make a connection to the second one. And there will be a period of time in the middle when the communication drops out or mutes. With other technologies, we actually make the connection to the second base station before dropping the connection to the first one so there's no interruption in communications. And we're going to go through the different variations in subsequent lessons. But those are the main components of a mobile radio network. Terminal, air link, 
base station, which consists of the base station transceiver, the antennas, and the physical support for the antennas, and then the backhaul to the mobile switch, which has a location register, which it uses to keep track of which base station the handset last registered on. And then the mobile switch also has a connection to other networks, usually using fiber optics, so that you can talk to people on landlines and on competitors' cellular networks as well.